Good morning. We welcome you to St. Paul United Methodist Church here in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. We're so thankful that you can join us. I am Victor Lutz. I will be your worship leader this hour, and we are so glad you can join us. Uh, we are a community of faith that welcomes everyone and serves God by helping others, reaching out as disciples of Christ, and service and worship. We gather as God's people the second Sunday up to Pentecost, and it is Father's Day, so we want to welcome and thank every father that is with us and there where you are, and we really mean that sincerely. This week's announcements are in your bulletin, and for the, for the transition we're having here at our, our church, we, uh, we pray for Pastor Horn as he exits and retires, and we are entering a new pastor, Pastor Brian Steele. We'll be getting closer in a couple of weeks for sure. The mark your calendars, Sunday, July 3rd, and we're going to have a special breakfast. Uh, um, it will be on July 3rd, and I believe it will be in back of our sanctuary, not downstairs. Uh, incidentally, we are also having this um, continental breakfast. It's at 9 o'clock. So we welcome Pastor Seal and his wife, Brianna. I hope I said her name correctly. We're welcoming them, and we look forward to seeing them. If you have any other um, hospitality in the back of the... There is a, a sign-up sheet, and that if you're interested as volunteers, you, um, you can sign up at that table today. Uh, it's very simple. You welcome people to church. And our office, again, is under transition, and Marjorie and I uh, wanted to let you know she's going to be speaking today at our pulpit. And uh, just call the office if you have any other concerns or prayers or emergencies. Uh, it's found in, on the website at sbumc.net. Last and final announcement, we want to pray for those in Ukraine. Our missionary, Scott Soley, and his family are there. The, UM, the UMCO, the Ukrainian Relief, continues. So if you have any money you want to offer the church, you can pay by cash or check directly. An offering may be um, put on the website. You can send it, give it by credit card, or sending gifts by fund or monthly is going to continue as long as we can. And uh, if you have any other questions, please call the church office. That is all the announcements that I have today. But we do pray for Father's Day and that uh, we really hope you have a wonderful day. So let's continue now and worship our first song we found at 707, Hymn of Promise. Please stand as you will.
all the worship can be found in your bulletins. Uh, I'll read the light print, and you may read, or I read the dark print, or you read the dark print, and I read the light print. Come, Lord God, and be with us this hour. Come, Lord God, and speak a word of comfort to your troubled people. Help us here, hear, hear Lord God, together. All of us pray. All of here, Lord God, in the quietness of these moments. You may all be seated. The psalm for today was a psalm that I thought we should add to our service. So I am reading Psalm 42. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night. While well, people say to me continually, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving and multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you for the land of Jordan and of Hermon and of Mount Miser. Deep calls deep as the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love. And at night, his song is with me. A prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppresses me? As with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me continually, where is my God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. Let us continue in prayer. Dear Lord, creator, savior, sustainer, we give you thanks for all you are and all you do. Help us to follow you and to reach others with your love. Let us share you and be the true church. We pray for those oppressed. There are so many, many people in need of prayer. We pray for those who are suffering because of wars. We pray for those who need comfort, healing, and help. We pray for those who are shut in and lonely and need our help. Forgive us for when we are not the best examples of your love. Help us to see others through your love and to forgive others as you have forgiven us. Thank you, Lord, for this day that we can worship you and now join me in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The hymn of preparation is found in your bulletins in the dark books on page 2203 in his time. Read, sing the entire stanza.
Today's scriptures can be found in Galatians, the third chapter, beginning in verses 23 through 29, the Living, New Living Translation. But the scriptures have confined all things under sin, that the promise through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were imprisoned under the law, kept the faith that was later to be revealed. So the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But now that the faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. You are all sons of God by faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as have been baptized under Christ have been put on Christ. This is complete in Him. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are one in Jesus Christ. If we are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. This is the word of God for the people of God. So thanks be to God. Well, I guess it's time I have to come up here and give this message now. I am Marjorie Kumar. I am the lay leader here, and um, our pastor has retired, and we have a couple of weeks of, you get to hear me speak. And um, I've prepared it, but I have to warn you, I've not had a voice for a few days, so I'm really trying hard to, to get through this whole time. You can hear me, I hope. Happy Father's Day. We remember fathers today, and we want to honor fathers. And we think about it, some of us have fathers that make it so easy to see God as a kind, loving father who supports us, a father who helps us learn, a father who helps us move into life so that we can live a fulfilling life and we can know God as part of that life. But that's not the experience for everyone. Sometimes the earthly father puts families in danger. Sometimes they're just not around. Sometimes they just make life frightening. How do we get past that to experience God as a loving father? Even if we can't see those characteristics of God in our earthly fathers, God still is there. God still is good and just. I wanted to read this tribute to fathers first. Some dads have become the leaders of their family without a godly example in their home as they grew up. Yet they've determined in their own hearts to start a legacy of love with their children, and they will have a good example to follow. Like Joshua of old challenged the people in Joshua 24, 15, he states the words and then he does all he can to live up to his commitment. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The godly father recognizes his own shortcomings and failures from time to time as he shepherds his family and will be humble enough to draw upon the strength of the heavenly father to help him with this guidance. As 2 Corinthians says, my grace is sufficient for you for my strength is made perfect in weakness. The godly father is not ashamed to admit to times of weakness and insufficiency, and yes, maybe even shed tears as they face challenges in leadership of the family. He looks forward to looking up to God and confessing his need to the one who is all sufficient and all knowing. We applaud you, Dad, as you sacrifice for your family in so many ways, yet we also encourage you to give your most valuable asset to your children as well as much as possible is time. Those special times of playing in the backyard will grow into a great relationship. 
Those early mornings fishing together may not yield much for the dinner table, but the conversations while fishing will be quite a catch for both dad and child. Taking time together will provide an example of what to look for in manners and actions as your children grow. There is a statement that says time is of the essence, and this is indeed the case with dads and kids. Thank you for working, planning, caring, disciplining, teaching, and yes, learning about being the best dad you can possibly be. In a world that says can't, thank you for saying you can. Most of all, thanks for being dad and trusting your heavenly father to guide you in this journey. This tribute does help us remember all those who have filled the roles of father in our lives. And I thought I would start with some examples from my own life because I had a pretty godly father, hardworking father. He was fair. He did work a lot. He, um, but he always went to the church, the whole family, and he did different service in the church. And he did spend some time with us. And I especially remember playing euchre. I come from a big enough family that we could play euchre fairly easily. Um, we had a number of players. And being around the table and laughing and visiting with good dad and just being a good memory. And then I think of other fathers in my family. One is my husband, who is a father to our two boys. And he, again, is hardworking. And when we had the children, I'm going to cry. I didn't mean to do this. We had the children. We both were in residency, which means we both were pretty busy. But he would take time for them. And when I was working and had uh, my late night at work, he would pick up both kids. So every Thursday night, he would pick up both kids, and he would have the evening with them, taking them either to Taco Bell or to Red Lobster, because the boys would get to pick which restaurant they wanted to go to. And... By him doing that, he is set up. Our boys are not little anymore, but he still makes a great effort to stay in touch and to talk with his sons because he knows that it is very important to stay connected. And then the other father that I see is my son. Now, his kids are five, almost four, and one. He is also a resident right now, so he keeps rather busy. But as being a father of a little one, he can tell. You can just tell how much he loves them, as he is always picking them up and hugging them and telling them that he loves them, wrestling to them, reading them, to them, spending time with them. So they know that they are important and hopefully making a good foundation as they will be growing up. And they grow up so quickly. As we look at the scripture today, we see that we are all children of God. I know in the New Living Translation that was rested, it said sons. My translation said children, so I'm going with children. We are all children of God. God is our parent. Our relationship with God, as the scripture pointed out, is not that relationship under the law that it was before, the law where you had the list of do's and don'ts. It is a relationship. It is an attitude. It is choices. It is living in that relationship with God. We have that because we are children of God because of faith in Christ. God's always there, but we have to accept him in order to become those children of God with that faith. My mom had a phrase that she said she finds comforting as she gets older. She says she is happy to be called a child of God. She thinks of the characteristics of children of trusting, of the excitement, and is glad that as she gets older, people see some of those characteristics in her still. We all have a father in God that connects us, but that doesn't mean that all of the children of God are the same. We are not all the same. And how do we live as children of God? In 1 John, we are told that we live by loving God and carrying out God's commandments. Think about our actions. Am I living out God's commands? 
Am I being a child of God? Am I trusting? Am I excited about God? Am I not embarrassed about knowing God? Think of a child not, that they are not embarrassed about shouting out anything that they know. Am I a child of God that others can tell when they look at me, when they see how I live? Am I loving, accepting, helpful, moral? Do I live God's principles? It can be easy to live that way when I am not really challenged. When I am around people that believe like I do, that are living a similar life, that's pretty comfortable. And I can live that way. But I don't think God expects that we are only going to deal with people that are like ourselves. The family of God itself has so many different people. And all of us are God's children. I think of the reaction of welcoming a new sibling into a family. A new sibling is coming. A child will be excited about getting the sibling. There will be joy and welcome. But when the sibling comes, there's often some change that's happening. Sometimes there's jealousy because that new one gets all the attention of the parent. So it's not always as fun once the child is there. When we are looking at the family of God, I see it in very similar reactions. Like a new sibling in our home, there is joy that we have so many other followers of Christ. But it also means change as we accept each other and work together. And many of us are not real comfortable with change. In the church, I think of how hard it is to change as we open to these brothers and sisters that have different experiences than us. Such a great variety when you look all over the world. So many people who are followers of Christ that are not like the people that I see when I'm walking out in my neighborhood. And beyond that, it's not just those that are followers of Christ. We are to be reaching out to those who don't know God yet. We are to be an example that will bring others in to the joy that we have to join us as children of Christ. The worship of others can feel different. The songs are not familiar. There are a lot that others do that may be different. But how do we help everyone to feel welcomed? And I need to remember, I'm not the judge on how, people, how things should be done in the church. This is what feels comfortable to me. This is what we should do. It's not really the way to run a church. Because it's not my church. It's God's church. And I need to be looking to God on how to be welcoming, how to be worshiping, how to be serving our God. We all have different experiences on how we relate to God. And often these experiences, at least somewhat, are related to our earthly fathers. It can be hard to think of God in other terms, especially when you're young. It can be hard to think as God as God and not just a hard judge or a critical parent if that's all you've known. But God is caring. God is a caring parent no matter what your parents were. When I think of being a child of God, I think of a family with God as the head. God is good, and he knows what's best for us. But God lets us each live our own lives. He allows us to mess up. And others mess up too. And we have to deal with others, and that's not always easy. Bad things do happen all over the world. For me, that means I need to cling closer to God. I need to be with God in order to deal with life. And when I cling to God and follow God, I experience a life of being a child of the Most High God. I am precious. I am loved. If everyone knew God as the loving Father and followed God, 
think of what a different world we would have. We would care for each other in ways that lead to helping, to making sure we each have good lives. We wouldn't be judging. We wouldn't be competing with others all the time. And all that can lead to miserable relationships. But I'm sorry to say that even when we look in the church, we don't always see that kind of ideal. I would hope that others looking at us as a church, looking at us as individuals, would get a glimpse of a world with God as the head, with us loving each other. But that doesn't always happen. But everybody is not following God, so we live in a world that we live in. It does have a lot of room for improvement. And I don't think people want to hear improvement with somebody really just preaching, you need to change, you need to do this. They want to experience those who are living and serving God and showing God to others. They should see that we have a joy in our lives. We are children of a God and others should see God in us. How do I show God to others in my life? Am I telling others about my loving Savior? Do I live out Christ's commands? Can others tell I'm a child of God by seeing how I live? Do the fruits of the Spirit show in my life? Remember from Galatians 5? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We are all children of God, and we have a heavenly Father that loves us. Let us love. Let us live. Let us be true children of a loving God. Thank you. Today we have our chancel of singers singing open our eyes and he's here the deer as the deer they changed that this morning it says in your bulletins it says people need the lord but you'll enjoy today's music just the same
There are four ways you can contribute to this ministry. Place your offering in the plate as you enter the, uh, the building of the sanctuary here. Give by text. Click on the donate button, now button, found on our website. And mail your check directly to our church here at 165 East Square Lake Road, Bloomfield Hills. Please stand now for the doxology. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, Creator of all beings, past and present, sustain us now in your love and abiding. We thank you for every bountiful and abundant blessing you bestow upon us, your children of faith. Take and accept these thy gifts, Father God, that we may radiate your light, extend the gospel far and wide. Bless this church in the coming years, Lord as we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Please um, stand now in our final hymn, closing hymn, 710, found in your regular books, Faith of Our Fathers, verses 1 through 3. Go now in peace, and may the love of God surround you everywhere. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Amen.